The Demon Sea. Walker, you must be mistaken. It's now, it's here. Come on down here and help us. Demon Sea. Demon Sea. Paranormal existence. You mean to say you came here publicly? The first move and the great conspiracy had been made. Cannot beat a weak squash. I've said this for years and people have berated yeah. me. People have berated me. Do you know what I do on a hot day, Mike? I get a can of Coca-Cola and I add a bit of cold water to it and people berate me for that. They call me a bastard. And I say, fuck you. Fizzy water or just plain water? Either one. Either one. Either one. Dickhead. I do not oh. care. Lemonade. Coca-Cola. Lager. I've been known to add tonic water to lager. I live life on the edge, Mike. I live life on the fucking edge. <laughs> <laughs> I think the last podcast I'm not sure if the producer recently put these out in order yeah but um, I asked what the balance was like between the paranormal and the non-paranormal content great question and he said it was a good mix he said his, his words were it, it was a nice balance <laughs> so yeah and again people are, are not paying for this so what they're really well, they're not getting they're not paying for it they're not paying a dime for it as they say there's, America, there's, really. there's, there's not a dime for, there's not a dime for this there's no, nothing. Brass penny. Um, you know, and and the amount. If you, turn, if you if you if you've got your little podcast app on your phone, and you've got Demon Sea Pod on there, yeah. Oh, you know, and then we start doing stuff for free. Mm. Uh, why would I care what you think? Exactly. I mean, I'm just, it's just the tax, the scrag end. It's this, this, it's the skid marks oh, in the pants God. that have been thrown in the behind the toilet in the motorway service station that you oh. end up getting stuck in and and having to have a dump whilst they're staring at you. You know, that's that's what it is. That's exactly it's, what it uh, is. It's the shiny toilet paper of life, isn't it? It's not, it's oh, not the, God, not the yeah. quadruple ply soft stuff. That, it's the stuff that just, Did you just smears the shit around. Yeah, do you remember that? Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah you were busted. Do you know, in, in school... It was free. It was free. It was, it was free. free in school, wasn't it? Yeah, it was free. Didn't have to go around Tesco and buy toilet paper. There was toilet paper in school, but it was shit. Do you, you never hear it anybody... Would, it would cover your ass in shit, yeah. but it was free. Yeah. And, and so what this is like. I used to do the panic wipe, which the panic wipe would involve. You, you're in school. You don't want to have a dump, but it it's, it no. hits you. It's str- and you've got to go. Nature's nature. Yeah, and you know you can't go during break time because that's what a everyone's got a poo and a man's got a poo. Yeah, they're all going to stand outside the door trying to get in and hurt you and put water on you or do whatever they do. Right. So you had to you had to hold it in until after break, till halfway through a lesson. Put your hand yeah. up. Can I go to the toilet, please? Okay. Yeah. Then you go to the staff toilet, which you're not allowed in, but you know it's going to be the quietest one. You'd go in there. Obviously, you whip your kegs off. You get on the box seat. You'd let it out. There's usually a teacher smoking in there as well. Yeah. And in our case, they were praying uh, for the terrible things they'd done to the pupils. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you'd sit there, and of course, half the log would come out, but because you're panicking, you're tensing more than relaxing, and you cut the log off yeah. halfway, you'd end up with a, what I call a flush and rewind. Oh, God. Oh god! You know the flush and rewipe way. There's, there's half a log hanging out, half of it's gone in. You think, oh, right? Oh, what? I've got 15 uh, minutes. So uh, you you get the scratchy, uh, shiny s- squares of this ass ripping toilet paper, and you start just scraping it. You just scraping it fast and hard, and you're sweating because it's a hot summer's day. Get it out, get it out, and it won't go because it's a log. So after 10 minutes of just battering away at this, all you're doing is smudging. <laughs> you're just smudging. You've then got to stop. I mean, this sounds very, very personal to you I've personal. been I've been in this hell you have to stop you have to change your breathing patterns you have to focus and you have to get the secondary log out because you've snapped it and if that doesn't happen all oh, you're you're just having a nightmare absolutely and we've all the thing is we've all been there we've all we've all done it we've all everyone's done it everyone's done a flush and rewind everyone's trying to rush one you, can, you shouldn't rush it no it's never rush it it's no. like a fine wine it's, exactly you know and you can't drink a fine wine with you know, 10 or 12, 15 year olds outside the door telling you to come out. You can't do that. No, you, you know? can't do it. You... <laughs> Shocking. I mean, sometimes I wipe so hard there was blood on the paper, which is a great name for an album if you make heavy rock. But um, Blood on the paper. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a great name for an album. Um, yeah, it'd be good, that. Number one smash hit album. What I'm saying is they're not paying for the podcast. No, no, they're not. They're not. Um, but here we are, free and easy, two young boys on the highway of life, letting it all out. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, logs and all. It's nice, isn't it? It's nice to just to kick back and. Oh, it's brilliant. It's talk our oh, oh, different worldviews, especially regarding the paranormal. It's nice that we come from you know a mutual area of respect and yeah. appreciation, but also with the same, by the same token, uh, very different 
takes on uh, on on life, the universe, and everything. I mean, you you yourself, Mike. Um, although mm. although you you know you you try and find the scientific evidence to disprove a lot of these things, you right. are yeah. you're, you're interested in the paranormal. You've been interested in it for many years. What would you say was the the very first thing that, that got you into the world of the paranormal, whether it be a science fiction film or a spooky story or, or even something you saw as a child, what would you say was the thing that, that turned you on to the world of the paranormal, Mike? Oh, what a good question, John. In depth. It's like a see. proper podcast. Though. We, should have, we should have guests on and stuff. Oh, um, uh, probably would have been a, a story in 2000 AD comic. Oh, yeah. Maybe something like... The Incredible Mind of, I think his name was uh, Wolfie Smith. Yeah. Maybe the Dark Judges in Judge Dredd. Mm-hmm. But we, yeah, and, and obviously Judge Anderson, who was a, was she had telepathic abilities. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that sort of thing. Those were the sort of defining moments that switched you on to the world of the paranormal. You might say. Yeah. And of course, Halloween at my nan's house in Merthyr. Classic. When she used to dress up as a ghost and get on top of you and, and ride you around the uh, living room. No, just used to give us a, a, washing up, a washing up bowl full of water and, and an apple. Okay. Like Bob and apples. Nice. That is nice. Yeah. I, I had a very, very different experience that turned me onto the world of the paranormal. I, 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 would, right. I would like, you know, I know, I know we have a bit of a laugh on this show and, you know, it's a bit free and easy and we really just, you know, we, 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 let, it, we let it all out here. But I we really, chill, don't we? Yeah. I'd like to I'd like to sort of tell a story today that I've shared with very few people in my life. Oh, you're amongst friends, mate. Um, it all goes back to well, probably about 1985, 1986. Could you stand a bit closer to the microphone or are you stand in the next room? Uh, oh, has it gone funny again? Yeah. How's that? Is that better? It's still quiet. Oh, for fuck's sake. Every time my son uses the car, it comes back stinking like a filthy Right. Here we go. Here we go. Right. How's that looking? How, how's that? Is that any better? That no, it's exactly the same. Fuck's sake. Right, is this any better? That's slightly better. Is, is this any better? That is better. Right, okay. I've, I'm actually, my face is touching the uh, the microphone at the moment, so... But that's fine, because I, I want to... That's fine. That's what Liam... That's how... Uh, what's his name? He's just singing Oasis all the time. Yeah, that old uh, Leon Gallagher. Leon. Leon Gallagher. Leon Gallagher. Leon Gallagher. Leon Gallagher. Was he related to Leon Britton? I think he was his son, wasn't he? Yes, he was. He was uh, Leon Britton's son, and their son. Uh, they had another boy called Noel Edmonds, and it was Leon Gallagher and Noel Edmonds formed Oasis, one of the biggest bands to come out of the UK in years. Yeah, massive band, brilliant. The pride of Milton Keynes. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Milton Keynes is is you know the statues to them. All the people from Milton Keynes have got the haircut. It's they're just a classic band. Oh, yeah. The Oasis, brilliant, brilliant. Uh, Noel Edmonds and Leon Britton, classic. <laughs> anyway, I, I digress. Yeah. I digress, Mike. Before we delve into today's meat and bones of it, I just want to tell yeah. you my story as a as a young boy. The reason that I became so involved with the paranormal was up the woods or were you? up the end of my street, Mike. Up the end oh, of okay. my street. Uh, imagine this: the year is nineteen eighty five. Uh, young boys and girls was, travel around on uh, grifters, BMXs. I was thirteen. I was probably just had my bar mitzvah. I was. Uh, did they? Uh, is that when they cut the willy skin off, or is that a different? I think. I think they think. I well, I'm not actually Jewish. I, I was. I was just that thirteen is the age you have a bar. Right. Okay. Um, I believe you, they, they they take the foreskin off uh, almost just right after birth. Right. Really, very very young. That's cool. Rabbi comes round. Tells you a bit about how special you are to God and yeah. how everyone loves you so much, and then he cuts your dick off. <laughs> <laughs> Heavy going. Heavy going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I digress. Oh. I digress. <laughs> I'm losing my shit again. Okay. Mm. The, um, as I said, of course, brings back the joke we told quite often in primary school. Yeah. Of what did the baby say to the rabbi? I don't know. Keep the tip. <coughs> Quite good. Not bad. And that's not in any way blasphemous. Uh, I think it's just... So- I think all religions are worthy of respect. Definitely. I mean, I, I love I love them all. Um, they're, they're brilliant. Yeah. They're brilliant, you know. Um, 
Anyway, let, let's go back. 1985, young boy, up the end of my street. Uh, a little imagine, Hello. imagine uh, you know people on grifters, BMXs, uh, gangs of kids wandering the streets aimlessly, smoking, drinking cans of lager. They, they, it was a lawless time. Oh God, it was like bloody. Yeah, it was like Escape from New York. Wasn't it? it wasn't like today. Kids staying indoors on playstations and doing you know TikTok videos. It was none. Of, it was it was about getting a, that. get a box. No. Of, no, you get a box of matches. You put them in a line across a dog shit. You light them, then you all breathe in the fumes and see who can last the longest. Yeah. That's what yeah. childhood was. That's what childhood was. You, you didn't know. have some little prick just unwrapping presents and telling tell ever where he bought them from uh, to get some fucking some none of that. No freebies. My my mate Ross telling us how to build a machine gun using nails and a disused yeah. firework. That's what. That's what, you know, growing It was proper up. back then, wasn't it? Absolutely fantastic. Like burning the wings off moths and other stuff. So yes, Really yeah. cruel stuff that was completely yes. necessary. Wrapping a plastic bag around a stick and then just setting fire to it and throwing it into someone's house. That's what it was yeah. all about. Posting Paul Max for a priest My mate Dave box. used to make uh, roly fags using the, the paper he peeled off the back of concrete blocks. Classic. Because when he liked it with like a magnifying glass, it mm. will keep burning. It doesn't Ex- go out. Exactly. And it made and, us uh, stronger. And he would put things like grass and wood lice in there. Yeah. And he'd smoke those. They don't, I don't mean grass as in marijuana. I mean just be, just dried grass. That's, that's what it's all about. That is what wood it's all lice. about. I knew, a, I knew a, a kid locally who went up a petrol station. He got the um, the tyre pump, the automatic tyre pump, put it up a frog's bum and exploded it. That, <laughs> that doesn't happen today. Right. It's not, which is cruel and you shouldn't do it. No. I, and by all accounts, he did end up a proper psycho. Well, that's how they start off. Yeah. It? Exactly. Like I wasn't one of the ones burning the wings off moths. But no. I did, I did. I've heard of it. Yeah. I, I like I said. I, my friend, my friend, also called Michael and I, a very popular name in the seventies. Mm. And he didn't know any different. We were like four or five years of age. We would uh, have a little game called um, snails. Right. Where his mum and dad had a pebble dash wall in the back garden. Yeah. Where he would throw snails against <laughs> the wall. Yeah. And the one who snail lost all its shell first was the winner. <laughs> Which in hindsight was a horrible thing to do. But kids these days, they just, you know, they're too busy. But we didn't have PlayStation. No, we didn't. We didn't, you know. Like I said, I, I drew the line at putting a row of matches in a very long dog shit and lighting it and breathing in the fumes. I, I drew the line at that. Yeah, everyone's got a line in the sand and a lot put across. Exactly. Um, but, you know, during this era, there was a house at the end of my road that had mm. been derelict for some time. I mean, we're talking at least... 10 or 15 years right. completely empty and quite well, a- I, 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 I always take exception with that phrase when people say at least 10 or 15 years yeah if it was 15 if it was at least 15 you've already said it could be 10 so that that do you mean you you're, don't need two numbers in an, in an at least you're right you okay. don't say at least five there were there were at least five or six of them well if they if there were six there could have been five and that's that's less yeah all right. So say at least six or at least five. Okay. So there was a house at the end of my road, derelict, and it had been empty for at least f- five years. Is that... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Okay. And on occasion, we play the old game that you do as a kid or, you know, wander into the back garden and stand mm. there for a bit because it'll be haunted, right? What you know? a game. And yeah, you, you, absolutely you, fantastic. you'd open the gate, you'd run in, come back out again. Of course, as time went on, we got a little bit braver and more and more yeah. kids started turning up to this house, Mike, you know, so originally it was me, uh, we, we'll have to bleep the names, but uh, yeah. jo- Joanne Mackay, uh, Charles yeah. Price, Matthew Price, Mostyn, <coughs> Howell, um, uh, Joanne Mackay's sister, my own sisters, we, we'd all start wandering up to this, um, to this so house. So four families, basically. Yeah. Well, initially, either that or you lived in a town that only had four surnames. Well, this is this is this is where it gets interesting, Mike. After a few weeks, we started wandering inside of the house, and it was incredibly scary. I can tell you. I mean, there were sort of burnt tables. There were horrible molds growing on the wall. It was a really had a really sinister feeling to it. And we got braver and braver until one day we said, right, we're going to go and we're going to go upstairs. We're actually going to go upstairs in this house. So there's this guy, imagine like Stranger Things, but with a dog shit on fire, right? Mm. Mm. And one day we go, okay, we're going to go in there. And we got up there and there was, there was another kid we'd never seen before. Was, there was another was kid. Mad scared. <laughs> you have to understand these kids were young. They were real young. They'd never been inside the house beyond going downstairs. But today they were going. They didn't know their ass from the elbow. They burned dog shit, sure, but they'd never been upstairs. <laughs> we 
we thought, let's go upstairs. Another kid turned up. Slightly stranger Real clothes kid. than us. Real kid. Right. Never seen him before. Right. All right. My name's Matt. What are you doing? We're going in the house, Matt. I'm Not from Victorian times. No, this is it. Scraggly jeans oh. and a t-shirt. Oh. Didn't, didn't look quite right. But, all right, yeah, we're going to go in the house, Matt. He went, all right, I've been in there before anyway. Don't don't worry, it's, it's, it's not haunted. We know it's not, but we're scared, Matt. To cut a long story short, we went in. Matt went ahead of us. He went upstairs, got to the top of the stairs, went into the bedroom. When he went in, I heard a noise, a muffled noise like this. <laughs> Matt, what are you doing? Stop dicking about, Matt. Stop dicking about, Matt. Stop it, Matt. Stop dicking about. Stop dicking about, Matt. No sign. We went into the right. bedroom. Matt wasn't there. All that we found no. was a used condom on the floor. No one ever saw Matt again. No one knows who he was. No one knows where he went. And that, Mike, is why I'm obsessed with the paranormal today. Well, that's a true story. Yeah. So you're just a donkey, just a, an old donkey in the room. An old donkey. I know, it was just completely full. Like, it was so full that it was about the size of a football, but there was a knot tied in it, so it was just bouncing around the room, so completely full of juice. <laughs> juice? <laughs> Is there a window? The window was boarded up. I went to a room with a window. Clarice. <laughs> I'd like a pie and window. some chips, Clarice. Have you ever eaten pie and chips before? <laughs> With salt and vinegar. I found a carny, Clarice, full of full of juice mm. in the corner of the room. Have you ever found a carny full of... <laughs> 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 oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Mm. Well, anyway, I mean, that, that so that's that's how I... And, I, and ever since then... I, I ate a condom <laughs> with father beans and a nice Chianti. <laughs> that's what I think. Oh, classic. Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. I ate his carny, Clarice. I filled it full of juice. <laughs> Oh my god! I'm sweating. I'm really have a great episode. This one, classic. Oh fuck it! It's, it's spooky, isn't it? It's like it's really spooky. Tales the, it's like tales of the unexpected. Yeah, tales of the, you know. It's a bit like that that program we did before. There was, there was nothing like there was nothing like this. Yeah, yeah, but with much less content and much less. Oh planning, yeah, I should say. Or, you know, there's none of that. Yeah. But people are but people are smashing free. that like button. They're smashing that like button. They're subscribing. So that's, that's you no, know, it's free. I tell people to respect for free. Keep churning this shit out until one of us dies. You know. Yeah. Um, and, and what's great is we've we've had a great build up to today's main content. Um, oh, can I should spin a roller coaster. I mean, yeah. I should say so. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if. I'll tease you into it, Mike. What do you think of the name Cynthia? Ever heard of any famous Cynthias? Can you name any famous Cynthias? Uh, there's a good song called Cynthia by a band called um, Blue Rodeo. It goes, Cynthia, won't you take me to the Pyramid Lake with you? We could watch the spaceships. Maybe they'd take us on a trip to that never-ending sky, to that... I mean, that's it. Called, Cynthia. Interesting you say that, because this... Why did I believe her? Heaven only knows. One look in my eyes and all my resolution goes. One day love just hits you with a flash. Leaves you staring blindly like some photograph. In fact, it might have been called photograph or camera. But definitely there was a Cynthia in it. It might be called marzipan or handbag or, you know, anything really. But uh... No, but it's about a woman called Cynthia. Yeah. And uh, the crux of it is, I think they were taking some photographs together and she was a bit of a... He was in love with her, even though it was a very, very brief encounter. Yeah. And uh, she fucked off, I think, with his camera at the end of it. Right, what a bitch. Good song, though, and a good band. Great band, actually. Blue Rodeo, still going. What are they called, Cynthia and the Cameras? Blue Rodeo. Blue Rodeo. Keep an eye out yeah. for them. Yeah. And then, of course, other Cynthia. There was Cynthia Payne. Yes, Madam Sin. The famous Madam from the 80s. Who uh, had a lot of sex and did a lot of whipping of uh, sort of uh, official yeah. governments, you know. Uh, she used to go, go around, yeah, smacking MPs with a rolled up telegraph and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and for some reason, she ended up being on breakfast television quite a lot after it yeah. all happened, which was really weird. And she always looked a bit like Prunella Scales. Me- you know, that sort of look she, she did that... and she was a bit cheeky and she'd say things like well of course uh... Ooh, <laughs> you know, of course it's not double anal yeah. <laughs> that sort of stuff meh <laughs> meh of course I was drinking tea for the whole thing <laughs> oh, 
Yeah, so the MP for Bexley Heath and he was actually dripping with a spunk. <laughs> <laughs> well, he got the rolling pin and put it up himself and said, Oh, you hurt yourself doing that, but he carried on doing it. Mm. Shocking. Oh, oh dear. Yeah. Um, any, any other famous Cynthia's you can think of? Cynthia, the madam, Cynthia from the song that might be called Cynthia. Ah, uh, Cynthia, Cynth- Cynthia, Cynthia. I can't think of any other Cynthia. Well, I'm about to introduce you to probably the most famous Cynthia of of all time regarding paranormal events. Mike, welcome to the world of Cynthia Appleton. A name. Oh, Madam Synth. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to, I was, oh, I was going to make a pie out of pastry, but when I got the rolling pin out, it was covered in blood. <laughs> well, we had a nice bottle of wine at me, of course, sideways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't know what was happening half the time, but I had plenty of money out of it. Mm, couldn't walk for a week, mind you. <laughs> oh, it kept me tits off. I kept me on two a.m. with Anne Donald and Nick. <laughs> and that sort of stuff. Not exactly that sort of thing. Yeah. Cynthia Appleton, on the other hand, Good name. a housewife from Birmingham, Mike. Now, what do we know about Birmingham? Uh, the jewel of the West Midlands, yeah. Britain's second biggest city. Yeah. Home of the Bull Ring. Yeah. Um, yeah. Home of Ozzy Osbourne as, as well, of course. Ozzy Osbourne. Ozzy Osbourne. Oh, I don't even know. Ocean, uh, Ocean Colour Scene. Yeah. Ocean Colour Scene. They're all there. I didn't even, even, even realise, you know, when I was... Uh, <laughs> Sharon, you know, came came out outside and said Cynthia's an alien, and that's what this story is all about today. Yes, On yes. November eighteenth, nineteen fifty-seven, English housewife Cynthia Appleton was taking care of her children at home when she suddenly heard a high-pitched whistling sound. Taking care of children every day. Taking care of children every way. I've been taking care of children. It's all right, taking care of children and working overtime. Anyway, sorry. <clears throat> Once the sound had stopped, Appleton saw a tall blonde man materialise near her fireplace. Ooh. Using telepathy, Ooh, the man lovely. instructed... <laughs> <laughs> Using telepathy, the man instructed Appleton not to be afraid. He was a visitor from the planet Garnisvan. Um... <laughs> Garnasvan, G H A R N A S V A R N, Garnasvan. And his people wished to make contact with special earthlings like Appleton. Sharon, there's a fucking some bloke from, from uh, Garnasvan outside. Uh, your blonde hair trying to get on top of me. Shut up, Ozzy. <laughs> Etc. I can't do a show. I, could, I couldn't even. Woman. I didn't realise at the time. Massive on my mind, not cocaine. Some man came in the room. Should be pants up. Do a naughty, do a naughty old looks. Won't be far away from that. Baby, right? baby, baby, baby. That's uh, all. <laughs> yeah. Naughty. I've been getting banged the Slade lately. Yeah, very good, very good Slade. I must say. Really good band. Um, yeah. Have we seen that? I've seen the lights out of the something of something. I've seen a bloke called Keith in Japan. I've seen a bloke who's called Keith and a bloke who's called Keith and a bloke yeah. whose name is Keith. And it's just something, something. I'm out of it, I'm out of it. We're living in the. You know that one? He's a great, he's a great wordsmith, old Muddy. Classic. Old. Absolutely brilliant. The thing with me, right? I've got bits of hair on the side of my head like a dog, coming up curly like a spaniel's ears. Fantastic, that. Mm. Anyway, over the next year, the man from Garner's van would make seven more appearances at Appleton's house, sometimes bringing along a friend. Mm. When not explaining how to cure cancer, the man would make pseudo-philosophical babble, insisting that time was not real and that all life was unified. During his last six visits, the man also shunned teleporting and opted... Why are you inviting this dickhead back like six or seven times? Well, originally he was teleporting in, in into the house. She couldn't stop it. She, he just It was a cloud of gas... There was a high pitch noise, and he just appeared. Sometimes bringing a friend, but it's a great point you've made there, Mike. Because listen to what happened next. During his last six visits, the man shunned teleporting and opted to arrive in a big black car. So at that point, you could stop him from coming in. Noddy Alder turns up in a black car. You're going to let him in once or twice, get a few anecdotes about the band. But oh, yeah, I should say so. Oh, all right, it's Noddy. I've come back to talk about the band. No, no, thanks, Nod. You're all right. I don't want you in. In September 1958, the Garners Van man and his friend showed themselves to Cynthia Appleton. Not Tolland man. No. Now, we all know about Tolland man, don't we, Mike? He's different, wasn't he? Yeah, he was just um, basically found in a sort of peat bog. 
Um, he'd yeah. been there for hundreds, if not thousands of years, uh, preserved perfectly in the peat. Um, and as yeah. I, as you know, when you when you see peat, if, you, if you're in North American, by the way, peat is like a type of turf you can use as fuel. I mean, it's not. He wasn't found in a man called Pete. No, no, no. That would have been shocking and amazing at the same time to find mm. a dead man inside of your own rectum. Inside <laughs> another dead man. Yeah, that would be. That's a bit like having a flush and rewipe, only to reveal you've you've sort of given yeah. birth to a dead man from the the pre prehistoric times. Like a sort of gory Russian doll. Very gory Russian doll. Imagine if you had a shit and I came out, Mike. Imagine that. If I shit you out, mm-hmm. yeah, that'd be, I mean, yeah, a painful and be weird. Yeah, make a lot of money on YouTube though. Oh, I'd be minted, actually minted. Yeah, you can monetize that straight off the shit out of that straight off the bat. During his last six visits, the man also shunned teleporting and opted to arrive in a big black car instead. In mm. September 1958, the Garners fan man and his friends showed themselves to Cynthia Appleton one last time. Mm. They told the mother of two she was pregnant. Confusingly, the child would be of the race Garners van, yet also her husband's son. In May mm. 1959, Appleton gave birth to a baby boy, just as the aliens had apparently James predicted. James Garner. Well, despite some media attention, the Appletons never saw the Garners Farn man again, and they soon quietly disappeared from the public spotlight. Where do you stand on that, Mike? I mean, if you, for example... I love people who get up the stick by somebody else mm. and then try to pass it off as some, some sort of supernatural happening. Two men who are played in, in, in a cloud of gas in the house yeah. on, on regular occasions, then stopped appearing yeah. in the cloud of gas and just turned up in a black car. Suddenly... Imagine Vicky telling you that, you know, she was... Pregnant, but she hasn't been having an affair. There was just these two clouds of gas appeared. Men from a cloud of orange gas with a high pitched whining yeah. noise. You know, that that I mean that definitely it didn't seem to prompt any questions here. They just seemed to just crack on. They had the kid, and then and then that was it. So I don't really know where that story was going or where it went. But oh god, which is the joy of the paranormal sometimes? Yeah, I mean. yeah. I think you're absolutely right. It had no real beginning to speak of. No. Uh, no middle. Yeah. And it just sort of tailed off of that one ending as well. It's just very much like my experience of going into a, a derelict house as a young boy in the eighties, uh, with a stranger, uh, only to find he disappeared yeah. and all that was there was a, a Connie full of juice the size of a beach ball. <laughs> Which I've gotta say, if you if you were at a party and you saw one of them and you were a bit drunk, would you kick it? Oh Re- yeah, hundred percent. Really yeah. hard. Yeah, with a pair of hobnailed boots on. I used to leave uh, for a joke. I, I would, you know, in in my younger days, sometimes I'd leave a uh, used condom in my friend Byron's shoes. Oh, shocking! Um, you know. Would you would you fill it with your own juice or just put a bit of stale milk? Oh in? yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh no, the real stuff and oh. tie it up and just chuck it in there. And how long did he did his feet get pregnant? What happened? Yeah, yeah, his feet gave birth to a to a to twins. <laughs> oh imagine that fantastic yeah yeah well I think that's another case solved I mean I wouldn't jizz in his shoes directly I'm not, a, I'm not an animal no that's 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 wrong it's just a sort of university prank isn't it? You know, do you know what though you, you reminded me of something you'd leave like condoms on like com- we didn't have computers but you'd leave them in books and stuff and you'd leave in those days you'd leave them on the TV remote control or a pocket calculator something like oh, that oh yeah or just basically what we're saying here Mike is you would trail your seed across any electrical item in the house is that, is that what you're saying we well, didn't have any electrical items really only an iron well, that'd, that'd be pointless a cooker hob electric cooker hob we had a gas cooker we would put a bit of seed on the gas hob you could do that yeah, yeah. is that something if you, you listen would... to this if yeah. you listen to this don't spunk on a gas hob no put it in a saucepan and boil it yeah Disgusting. I'm thinking like an omelette, I suppose, isn't it? Possibly, yeah. I mean, it's a very good question. If someone is listening and they're willing to save up their, you know, their excess fluid. I like reckon eight or nine goes. Yeah, you could fill it at a tire sauce pan. In a, in a cup, you could do a non-stick pan and see what happens. Well, I'm thinking like a, like a wok and you want to get about a pint and a half in. And you a pint it. and a half? Yeah. So you save that would it. It take me like three days. Well, just that's no problem. Just save it up, and then just like an omelette, you just draw the draw the draw the edges into the middle as it's cooking. You know the way that to do oh, it. Oh, fold it. Yeah, you sort of fold it. Fold over, it yeah. over. Get it. Get it nice. Put a bit of cheese on. Ironically, a uh, couple of spring onions. 
fold it over and then uh, you've got yourself quite a tasty I stuff. mean, my mouth's watering now. I, can I think mean, about it. If, if, if the world does go the way we think it's going to go and everything ends tomorrow, this this may, this may podcast could, could be someone's... Oh, soon, you know? cheers omelettes will be the f- way forward, mate. We'll, we'll be some cracked black pepper on there. Lovely, sea salt. Lovely. Do you know what I do as well? Grate a bit of my arse cheek off to give it a little bit of a... Oh, that'd be lovely. Do you know what I mean? Just, just yeah. a little bit of flex of meat in it. Oh, shavings! Absolutely, our shavings like Parma hand. Lovely stuff, raw but very, very thin. Mm. Oh, cracking! Absolutely cracking. And then you do a check your stools like the Germans do for worms. Then <laughs> I don't think you get worms from boiling your own seed and eating it, but it, your own meat should be okay for worms as well. But if you, if you, let's say the world goes totally post-apocalyptic and you, you, well, okay. you're using somebody, somebody else's uh, bottom cheek for the meat. Right. That's when you're going to get worms. And on on that bum note, see what I did there. <laughs> I think we should round this one up quite nicely, and maybe you know just roll off free and easy into the woods. But before we do Have that, we done long enough. Are we, I don't know if we've done long. I don't even know. I mean, it's free. We've so. been going about twenty eight minutes. Is that long enough? I mean, let's fill. I think it's long. Enough. I've got. I've got it's something. Long. I've got something. I've got something. Before we, just we go, fill for like a minute. And a half. All right. Okay. I think it's free, but let's give him at least half an hour. Okay. Free, All otherwise. right. Okay. You're you're right there. I'll wind you about it getting shorter as well. Mike, you're it's a miserable. you're a big fan of miserable rugby. Fuckers. You're a big fan of sport. You enjoy the you enjoy yeah. the active outdoor life. Um, rugby is a game that's very popular throughout not just Wales but the rest of the world. It's played in South well, Africa. mostly the ex ex British Empire countries, but yeah, yeah, and other places. Yeah, and it's a game that can build character. It can build uh, that that idea of team teamwork, and it can build uh, yeah. mental health. It's very good for it's very good. For That's probably enough now. That's probably enough time. Do you reckon? Well, I was just yeah. going to say, I just wanted to say, I might as well get to the, oh. the crux of it. Oh, yeah, go on. We'll give it an extra go on. Uh, a couple of lads uh, I know in the late 90s were playing rugby in school. One of them didn't have the correct type of pants to wear under those baggy rugby shorts that wouldn't allow his penis and balls to come out the side. Always wear tight pants for rugby. Yeah. Um, he wanted to play desperately, so we went to a charity shop at break time, bought a pair of uh, those sort of tight pants that, that clenched the penis and balls. Put them on. Nut, I'll, call the, I'll call those nut huggers. Yeah, got some nut huggers. Put them on, played the game of rugby, cracking. Brilliant. Penis and balls stayed in place, played the rugby, brilliant. Uh, about a week and a half later, we got worms. There had been worm eggs in the pants. They'd gone up his anus and they'd impregnated him. So the the moral of this podcast is don't wear pants yeah. that aren't yours to, to play rugby or do anything. So that's it. That's, we filled. We filled perfectly there. Yeah. Well, oh, we're up to, yeah, I mean, we're, we're 29 and a bit now. So, I mean, that's we're in the 30th minute. Brilliant. And for free, that that really is, that pushes oh, the God, you're getting, Well, divide that by 30. I'm, what's it costing them per minute? Nothing. Nothing. Uh, I tell you what, before we yes. let's end with the song, I'll, I'll get in the car and I'll drive off into the sunset. Here we go. What, what's the song you like? Get in the car. Uh, I am a lineman for the county And I drive the main road Searching in the sun for another overload I hear you singing in the wire I can hear you through the wire It's the witch, it's all the witch, it's all 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 the And it's something on the line And it just yeah. fades out, and whoever's listening to Fade this on. thinks, "What the fuck have I just listened to?" and turns it off. Yeah, but they might think, "Oh, that, that's a good, good track." And if you're thinking, wondering that was originally Glenn Campbell. The Demon Sea. You must be mistaken. It's now. It's here. Come on down here and help us. Demon Sea. Paranormal existence. You mean to say you came here purposely? The first move in the great conspiracy had been made. 